Conference can report on House File Number 5. This is the David's motion. Um, <clears throat> And the conference committee report is addressed to the Honorable Kurt L. Dout, Speaker of the House, the Honorable Michelle L. Fishbach, President of the Senate. We, the undersigned conferees for House File Number 5, report that we have agreed upon the items in dispute and recommend as follows. And the conference committee is signed by three of the five House members and four of the five Senate members. Davids moves that the report of the conference committee on House File Number 5 be adopted and that the bill be repassed as amended by the conference committee. I recognize the author, Representative Davids, who will explain the report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. This is the conference report on House File 5, also known as the reinsurance bill. Uh, this bill establishes a state-based reinsurance program called the Minnesota Premium Security Plan designed to mitigate the impact of high-risk individuals on the individual health insurance market. The program is contingent on, upon receiving uh, federal funds through a waiver request. Uh, and members, it's how it's different from how it left the House. The funding has changed to, uh, for each of the next two years, $200 uh, million out of the Health Care Access Fund, $71 million out of the General Fund. Uh, if we do get some block grants, uh, as we do get federal funds, uh, in the bill it says that uh, various funds will be replenished with money that hasn't been spent because we've received federal funds. The most can be spent in the years uh, 271. Uh, it, another change from when I left the House is we went to a 13-member board instead of an 11-member board, and their responsibilities uh, are laid out in the conference report. Uh, the attachment points are similar to when it left the House, the 50,000 uh, attachment point with the 250,000 max. We did go to an 80 percent coinsurance in between there uh, that the board uh, would set those rates depending on, on the need. Uh, so with that, those are the basic changes, Mr. Speaker and members. I'd really appreciate your support on this. We need this to, govern, to the governor as soon as possible uh, so that uh, Commissioner Rothman uh, can start his work on not going through a situation like we had in 2017, and hopefully we will have uh, more carriers enter the market uh, and have additional plans. We did put an access piece in there, especially for members of rural Minnesota, that says that if a company is in a county, uh, that plan has to offer an additional plan. So it's very, very important. Uh, on the access side, uh, I would like to thank the conferees, Representative Halverson, Hoppy, Schumacher, and Dean in the House. And I'd like to thank the Senate conferees. But I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank the governor's office uh, for helping us get through some hurdles, uh, trying to figure out what CMS was doing uh, and yesterday morning, uh, we received information from CMS so uh, we could craft a bill uh, that will work. So with that, members, uh, I appreciate your support on the conference report. And before I do that, though, we have some great staff, uh, nonpartisan staff, DFL staff, Republican staff, uh, that really uh, helped us put together, and I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there any discussion to the conference report? Seeing no discussion, member from... Lesur, or Nicollet, Representative Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I live in Nicollet, but I proudly uh, represent Lesur County, too. Uh, members, I, I am going to ask that we turn down this conference report. It's fundamentally the wrong choice. What this report does is provides what news reporters call a financial safety net for insurance companies. There's no assurance of affordable rates. There's no assurance of additional options for, for those who are bu buying insurance in the uh, individual market across the state of Minnesota. And there's no assurance of strong provider networks that we know our, our neighbors need. Compare that to the Minnesota Care buy-in, which I stand proudly to, to still ask this body to consider. It's a program we know. It provides an affordable option. It provides availability. It would be available to to insurance purchasers across the state of Minnesota where they could access strong provider networks, get the health care they need for themselves and their families. Furthermore, this is fiscally irresponsible. Compare the two again. The subsidy for the insurance companies will cost us more than $500 million. That's more than $500 million. To establish the Minnesota Care buy-in would cost $12 million. Compare those. $500 million when you vote, should you choose this option, 
versus $12 million to the, for the taxpayers on the Minnesota care buy-in. I genuinely believe this is an obvious choice, and, and we should not adopt the conference report because the choice of choosing the insurance companies over taxpayers, choosing the insurance companies over citizens is fundamentally wrong. It's the wrong choice. Let's set it, send it back to committee. Let's do it right. Thank you. Member from Olmstead, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise to oppose the adoption of this conference report. Representative Johnson has mentioned many of the reasons. This is still fundamentally, actually, a subsidy for insurance companies. It does not achieve the goals of stability of the marketplace. It does not achieve the goal of affordability of premiums in the next year. And it does not achieve the goal of having health care, health care, accessible to Minnesotans. It does none of those things. Just as when the bill left this floor, it still only guarantees that insurance companies will pay out less. That is the only thing that is guaranteed in this bill. Now, I remember it was not so long ago, at the beginning of this session, we had a lot of discussion and debate over a bill that was intended to stabilize the market for 2017, the year that we're in. And I remember Republican members arguing against the governor's proposal. Now, if you remember, the governor's proposal was to give a, um, a pool of funding that would flow through the insurance company and be a discount on the bill that the insured person would get. The money was not going to people who were get already getting the tax subsidies under the Affordable Care Act. Obamacare, as you know, helps people who are in the lower income range but are, also, but are still buying their insurance. It gives them a subsidy to help them buy insurance on the private market. The money we talked about then did not go to those people. It only went to those people who were actually going to pay out a lot more money because of the climbing insurance rates. I recall very clearly that Republicans argued not to do that. You all did not want to do that because you called it a subsidy to insurance companies. And that, at that time, that did not seem acceptable to you. But in fact, the governor's proposal then was not a subsidy. It was a pass-through to the person who was paying the premium. It was a discount program for the insured person where they were guaranteed to get that money as a discount on their insurance premium. What you've got today in this conference report is fundamentally different. It is absolutely a subsidy to the insurance companies with no pass-through guaranteed, with no guaranteed impact on premiums, with no guaranteed impact on stability, because not one company has as far as I've been told, not one company has said that if they get this money, they will give us the results we are looking for. And even if they do, there are still problems because the money is going, even if we assume it reduces premiums, it doesn't focus the money on the people that need it the most. It's not going to focus on people by how much income they have. It's not even going to focus on how much different people have to pay in their rates. It just goes to the insurance company to figure out how they would want to distribute the benefit if they distribute the benefit. Members, this is not a responsible way for us to use Minnesota's funds. This is not what we should be doing. And there is still time we could send this back to conference committee we could tell the conference committee to work on this some more and use the money in a responsible way. We could even do a pass-through like we did for the 2017 year, where we do a discount, where the companies have to pass through the money to the insured and take that off of their premium. There's no reason we couldn't do that for another year while we continue to see what the federal government is going to do to us and what we should be doing in response. But this is absolutely the wrong approach. It's an irresponsible use of the money, and I ask you to vote against the adoption of the conference report. 
There being no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion to adopt the conference report on House File 5, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. No. The, mo the motion prevails. The clerk will give the bill its third reading as amended by conference. Third reading, House File Number 5, as amended by conference. Any further discussion? Member from Dakota, Representative Halverson. Thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, I know that both Chair Davids and I are hard to spot, so um, appreciate you looking out for us. Um, I, I just want to rise. I was, I was a member of the conference committee, and I appreciate being appointed and having the opportunity to work on this. Um, I came to the table in the spirit of really wanting to find a solution for folks in the individual market who are struggling with high premiums. Um, I really believe that we need to have a sustainable individual market for the folks um, in our districts who are um, independent business owners, for the folks who are perhaps early retirees or married to an early retiree, um, that they have options to make sure that they have sustainable and affordable coverage that gives them access to health care providers. Um, however, through the process, I have um, determined that um, I think that this takes too much of a risk, frankly, with um, taxpayer money um, to the tune of $271 million a year. Most of that, two thirds of that, over two thirds of that coming out of the Health Care Access Fund. The Health Care Access Fund is vital and has been a vital, played a vital role in making sure that Minnesotans have access to insurance. Working families have access to insurance. Um, and, and if we put those funds at risk, I believe that we are, are sacrificing stability in one part of the market in order to try to get stability in another part of the market. And we don't have that guarantee that that stability is going to come. Um, I have put forward alternative proposals and um, really hope that we have the opportunity to continue to work on reinsurance. I don't think that this is the plan that's going to get us the stability that, that Minnesotans are really looking for. I appreciate the effort, and I really want to say I don't think that health care reform is a partisan issue. I think that there are people throughout Minnesota that really need us to step up and do this work together, um, and I stand ready to do work that is going to meaningfully change the way that we provide health care throughout Minnesota that's going to make Minnesotans sure of what they're able to get year after year after year. Um, unfortunately, this is a proposal that I, I won't be supporting, um, but our work um, continues. Our charge is still there. Lower premiums in the individual market. Make sure Minnesota's working families have access to insurance. Make sure that the working poor who are paying premiums into Minnesota care have a system that's there for them. It's the system that stabilized our, our health care system in Minnesota um, back in 1992, and it's worked well. Um, we need additional stability. We don't need more question marks for the future of Minnesota's health care system. So um, I am voting no. I do thank Chair Davids and the other conferees for their work, um, particularly on um, their work with the governor's office to find agreement on language that is going to um, protect um, our BHP, protect federal funding. Um, through uh, the waiver contingency, which is super duper technical, but incredibly important. And there was a lot of work that was done on that. So um, I, I thank all the conferees for their work, but I will be voting no. Member from Ramsey, Representative Murphy E. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I appreciate that. And I know we've got a really long and full day. Um, so it'll be helpful, I think, for uh, the speaker to do the 360. Uh, of the floor before we uh, cut off debate in the future. Just wise, wise, word to the wise. Thank you. So here we are um, trying one more time to solve a problem that was declared an emergency in October, an emergency for Minnesotans back in October, and we still do not have any commitment uh, that this is going to work. I have to say, uh, this is among the craziest things that I have ever seen um, occur in this Minnesota House of Representatives. Uh, $542 million, largely going to the insurance companies, still no promise that we're going to reduce premium rates, 
for those people in the individual market, still no promise that we're going to expand networks for those people lacking networks, still no promise that we're going to have better access for those Minnesotans in the individual market, and absolutely no effort in this legislation to get at the underlying problem of cost. There's no effort to reduce costs. There's no effort to improve health. Zero effort. There is nothing that looks like a reform in this piece of legislation. All it is is $542 million to the insurance companies with the wink and a nod to the people in the individual market that they may get some relief down the line. And I am surprised literally surprised that this is the solution, the best solution that this conference committee and the Republican majority could come up with. Representative Dean, he's got some ideas in his health care bill. I don't know if they're going to work, but I know that he's a reformer. There's no reform in this legislation. One of the most absurd things, thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, oh, I, I assure you I did not do that. <laughs> Members, the noise in the chamber has become quite loud. Please take your conversations to the alcoves or to the retiring room so members may listen to the debate. Representative Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that kindness. One of the most absurd things about this piece of legislation is how much money it takes from the Health Care Access Fund. Now, we have debated and will continue to debate about the value of the Health Care Access Fund, but it was put in place 25 years ago with a tax on providers and premiums to fund health care coverage for working poor Minnesotans. And we are stealing money for that fund to subsidize insurers, to pay for coverage for people at the upper end of the income scale, and by doing so we will destabilize coverage for working Minnesotans. We could do so much better than this. And I know you feel rushed because of the urgency that was placed on this issue by your speaker in October who said it is a crisis and we must find a solution. But this, this is not a solution. And we're going to further damage and destabilize health care for more people in Minnesota by doing it. I would urge a no vote and I would beg the governor not to sign this. We can do better for the people of Minnesota for, than this. It is a costly endeavor with no promise to the people of Minnesota that we will solve their problem. And that's not good enough for them. Please vote no. Member from Ramsey, Representative Mahoney. Members, I'm going to be voting no on this. And the reason I'm going to be voting no is this. This hands out a half a billion dollars to insurance companies. I've sat on the Work Comp Advisory Committee I don't know, 10 years, 15 years, seems like most of my lifetime sitting through boring meetings. But they have a reinsurance board. Never asked for a dime from us. Been able to charge the insurance companies. And over time, they have made it work. So much so that just a few years ago, they had to come to us to authorize a repayment to the insurance companies because they had too much money in their accounts. I don't know why I'm rescuing insurance companies, not that I like or dislike insurance companies, but I, don't have, I shouldn't have to re rescue a failing business model. They should be able to rescue themselves. Otherwise, we are just taking money from our taxpayers' pocket and giving it to insurers when they should be taking care of themselves. They've managed to do it when they insure all of us over our workplace injuries. I'm, not, I just, I'm confused and befuddled. So I will be voting no on this particular issue. Member from Carver, Representative Hoppe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and I have said this on the floor before. I will say it about this bill. It is not a perfect bill. 
but I think it's a bill that we should all vote for. I think we should encourage the governor to sign so we can help to try to stabilize the insurance market, the health insurance market for 2018. Um, Representative Alverson, I look forward to continuing to work with you on these issues. There are a lot more reforms that we can do. Uh, Representative Murphy, you mentioned cost. Absolutely, you are completely right. We need to get at costs. And there are ways we can do it, and we're going to continue working on these reforms on a bipartisan, bicameral basis. We need to lower the cost for the insurers. We need to lower the cost for the providers to help the people of the state of Minnesota. And I think in this chamber, I know we have some pretty good ideas on how to get there. Uh, the timing wasn't quite right to put things like that in this bill, but we will be working on those things in the interim and maybe even before the end of this session. But we will be, this is a work in progress. This bill sunsets in two years. Um, we are going to leave this to a future legislature to figure out because we don't know what's going to be coming from uh, the federal government. We want to be prepared for whatever it is. Not a perfect bill, uh, but I, I will say I appreciate working with people from the Senate, from the House, from all of our staff, uh, both sides of the aisle. The nonpartisan staff has been great. And really, working with the people from the governor's office, again, was a pleasure. Once we figured out, I think what happened is we were getting different answers from CMS, and once we all got on the same page, then the, the actual bill came together fairly quickly. So members, I would encourage a green vote today, and I hope when this gets the, we get it right over to the Senate, it goes to the governor's uh, desk and he signs it as soon as he gets it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Member from Hennepin, Representative Tisa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just briefly, my concern on this bill, people have expressed a lot of things. I just think nothing that we've seen this year is actually going to solve the problem for the people that our people are going to be facing in the fall of 2017. We require federal waivers for both of these that are not guaranteed to happen. We should be actually focusing on a short-term solution that's going to solve the crisis we're going to see again in the fall of 2017. And the other thing I guess I would just say about this is, you know, I've watched this now for 15 years. We continue to try to manipulate the market to bring bigger and bigger, you know, to, to make sure that pools are at least big enough to survive. We should stop worrying about manipulating the market to create these pools that are just sufficient to survive. We should create a pool of all Minnesotans so that they can actually have affordable health care. That is the answer, and we should get there as soon as we can. There being no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. Members, please vote. <laughs> Members, please vote. The clerk will close the roll. There being 74 ayes and 57 nays, the bill is repassed as amended by conference and its title agreed to.